Hey, what's up, guys? Um, so, I figured I would go ahead and just make this video based on the popularity of my How to Build Your Garage video. So, um, this is what my house looked like when I first bought it. Um, I'll give a price breakdown at the end. As you can see, it's just a, a total mess. Um, completely abandoned for about five years, so... I decided to restore some life into this thing, so uh, just check out the video. Thanks, guys. All right, the first thing I wanted to do was what, and the thing I thought that was the most difficult was tearing off the roof and replacing it. Um, it had a, a layer of asphalt shingles, which is a breeze to take off, but then it had a layer of wooden shingles, which was extremely difficult to take off. Um, so it took me a good two weeks just to tear off that roof and it was some extremely hard work um, I don't know exactly how they did it but it was much different than any type of videos that I'd seen and any type of uh, tutorials or anything um, it had probably for every little five inch shingle there was maybe 50 to 60 headless nails and so I bought a specialized shovel just to kind of dig them all out and everything and it still took me two weeks and was back-breaking labor uh, if I had that all to do again I would have paid somebody to do it so as you can see um, I have on this one I have the top part of my roof sheath which wasn't too bad it was a little dangerous so I did use a harness system just to make sure you know you're not saving much money if you're having to pay for an ER bill so you know a lot of this stuff I'm not going to go in depth it's just going to be an overview but you know sheathing is pretty straightforward so we'll go on to the next one all right as you can see um, I got the bottom part sheathed now and then I have the top part actually shingled uh, you know it's pretty standard in all the valleys you want to put your ice and water shield then you want to put your aluminum then you want to shingle it uh, there's much more videos that go into depth that you can um, look at but um, you know a company wanted twenty thousand dollars I my lowest bid was twenty thousand dollars to do for for my roof to totally redo it I ended up doing it for about eight thousand dollars so you know it's kind of crazy I did have to take three weeks off of work but it was worth it okay guys so the roof is all done um, I used the Grace Triflex the same thing I used for my garage underneath the shingles and Owens Corning architectural shingles um, and now I'm starting to tear off this old wood siding which was a pain in the ass make sure you have on your eye protection your ear protection get a um, get a crowbar and just start going at it you got to tear out all the nails everything else um, on this one there was this house I was not expecting so much termite damage and rot damage uh, so it was very very significant uh, ended up having to replace probably about 20 studs in the house and probably around an eighth of the sheathing on the outside so it was pretty significant but uh, you know it's it's just manual labor it's not skilled so you can do this stuff with no experience no expertise and let's go on to the next picture okay so this is the north side of my house and uh, I knew I was gonna have problems here but I didn't think I would have this many problems as you can see all of my electrical and stuff is run from on the outside I wanted to change that and also there was a forest growing on this side with the smell of mold you would not believe so me and my wife uh, we came out one day and we cut down every single tree that was back there and threw it into a pile and burned it uh, all this stuff all underneath the windows was all rotted out completely covered in mold like it was unbelievable I didn't get any pictures of that but um, so now I'm working on rebuilding it resheathing it and reframing it all right, now I wasn't expecting my sill plate and my front plate and the bottom plate for the walls to be um, rotted out, but 
they were, and so I just took my sawzall, cut it all out, um, had to jack up the house a little bit, you know, no big deal. Thankfully, I have that access point, and I have some pictures of it when it's done, so that one's next. All right, you see, as you can see, it's pretty self-explanatory. I just replaced it all. Make sure you use green plate, especially for um, the bottom, the sill plate. Um, I foamed everything up. You know, I'm always worried about critters getting in and everything else, so I made sure to foam everything up real nice. And um, yeah, we'll go on to the next picture here, and I'll be doing a little bit of framing next. As you can see, it's pretty standard framing, um, two by six walls. Um, there's not really much to say. Um, just make sure you do it correctly. And this is it when it's uh, totally sheathed. I could have used plywood, but I wanted to uh, match. It was the wood that was there was a unique thickness, so I just wanted to match it and not have. Um, any differences when I went to go side it so that's why I went with the plank wood like that and this is just a small snapshot of uh, my land and where I live at and we love it all right guys so here are the windows and doors uh, you can see I put those in I used flex wrap around all the bottom of the windows uh, sealed it with a uh, rubberized flashing that I got from grace and that's from Home Depot um, I use Sutherland's to get my windows and doors. Uh, it's a little company that we have. It's like a small Home Depot, basically. Uh, it was very reasonable for the windows and doors. They've held up beautifully. I don't, honestly, I'd have zero complaints. Uh, it cost about 4,500 bucks. Uh, I did use the Tyvek on my house uh, because you can use the cheaper stuff, but Tyvek is far superior, you know, in the long run. So it. You know, there's so many different uh, videos on windows and doors. You guys could see probably 20 different videos on how to correctly install each one. So I won't go into that. But um, actually, this was the easiest part of anything that I did by far. The easiest. And this is just another angle to show you guys. It's uh, coming right along. And this is that same north side where I just got done, finished the sheathing. Okay, and then I started my siding. Uh, it's the LP Smart Siding, which is just basically like a wood composite siding. Uh, I could not recommend it highly enough. There's tons of videos on how to install it. I used 1x4s for my corners. Um, it's There's just nothing better in my opinion you can take a sledgehammer to this stuff and it'll hold up we've had massive hailstorms no problem whatsoever all right and this is just that same north side you see i have scaffolding i bought for about 150 bucks and this next picture is my west side and it's moving right along no problems all right and this is the before and after uh, replaced the post with 4x4 post and painted them white. I used Sherwin Williams duration paint for everything. Um, stuff's incredible. Highly recommend it. Um, it's just wonderful. So, and about to go to the next photo. And this is also pretty much completely done. So, there we go. I don't want to spend a lot on the inside because it's basically, you know, all down, tore down to the studs, had to tear out all the uh, plath and laster. And I'm going to get a little bit more into the electrical and give you guys like a simple guide a little bit later on. All right, so here's my downstairs bathroom. There was already one there. And this is the vanity that I chose. I got it from Home Depot. Uh, it's pretty nice. Bought it on sale for about 500 bucks. Seen it's about $1,500 now, so... It was the right move. All right, here's my shower. I did a corner shower, and that's a frameless door. Um, I ended up using Kohler for all of my fixtures and everything else. So I recommend them. They 
they did a real nice job and they work great to this day so no problems all right now this is one of my favorite things to build it was a wood hearth because i knew going when i first bought my house you know you living out in the country you just have to have a wood stove so i really 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 enjoyed this project i even made like a little special design there in the middle uh, made it you know a little unique uh, it has backer board around the bottom and i built the base just from wood and you cover that in backer board cement board whatever you want to call it um, and it's just it's just really lovely man to have a wood stove and then had to chisel out some of that brick to put my six inch pipe through but um you know it's worth it all right and this is my dog uh she just loves that wood stove and when it's cold in the winter she loves to sit down in front of it and it's just nice as you can see i've gone a long way in my house <laughs> from the last picture um i put my wood floor down it's a floating uh wood wood floor um i I'm trying not to go too in depth on things because you know you're going to have your own uh, ways of doing things and what you want, what you like. But um, this just kind of helps give you all kind of visualization if you have like a house that you want to remodel. So, all right, the kitchen is probably where I received like the most compliments or the most uh, questions and. Um, basically what I did, my kitchen is about 16 by 14 uh, and I put on the right you can see there's a closet here a pantry closet and I ended up just building that all from scratch because nothing was there it's extremely simple and then you want somewhere to put your food and stuff like that the last thing I want to be dealing with is uh, having to put all my foods in the cabinets and just not cool so I ended up using Ikea cabinets and their butcher block countertop, which I love. Um, this is a Kohler faucet and it has the head that pulls out. So um, it's really nice. I went with Samsung for my refrigerator and GE for my range. You know, this is basically, you know, I'm, I'm 30 now. This was my second home. My first home, I was just like, you know, I have to have a range because when you're cooking and it's hot and it's like stinking up your house just like man I just wish I had one that would just take every all the smell outside the heat outside and I'm telling you it's a it was a pain in the ass to do that to put that in but it's well worth it now um, yeah and I'm trying to think of any other questions as you can see uh, on some of the the sheetrock um, I went ahead and did the recessed lights. I did 36 of them total in my house. It's an absolutely pain in the ass, but I think it's basically essential. It's awesome to have. And uh, I did, for the crown molding, I put in those corner blocks. Man, it just saves you so much time. Uh, and it just looks cool, I think. Um, so, as you can see, I have the floating wood floor. And I also have, now, I have a... Uh, kitchen island with some stools so and it matches it's real nice you know we love it all right I'll... all right one of the most daunting tasks for me because i'd never done anything electrical in my entire life uh so i'm gonna try to condense what i learned into a very small package so you can kind of have an idea um, as you see i put the wire size and your um your basically your breaker amperage on the right side. So for 14 gauge, you want to use 15, 12, 20, 10, 30, 8, 40, and then like 6, 50, and so on. Uh, the red represents the hot wires that would go to a gold screw on your outlets. And if you need to go to a light or a switch, then you would just piggyback off of that. The green is your ground and the silver is your neutral. Um, I ended up doing all 100% uh, of my electric myself. And you can see you're going to have two hot wires come in from the street. And I replaced, my stuff was on the outside, I put it inside. 
So it was just an electrical mess before, and I put it all inside. Um, so you want to make sure the power's off while you're, you know, when you're doing something. You know, I have some friends who do their electrical, and they do it while it's on, but to me that's just totally unnecessary. It's, you know, something were to happen, it would just be a disaster. So just keep the power off, be smart. Um, you know, follow the simple rules of electricity, and you should be fine. What if you have the walls out in your house? Just, just do it. You know, it, it'll cost you a fortune if you try to get to do this stuff while the walls are in. Um, so, all right. I know this is a very, very, very simplistic view, but I'm telling you guys, like, if I would have had just somebody just break down those wire size and amperages for me in a very simple way, that would have shaved a ton of time. From my research because it, I just kept getting you know what might seem so simple to somebody who's done it before you know if you've never touched it before it's very intimidating so all right let's go on to the next one all right and this is how it looks actually in real life like it looks insane insane you know but it's not uh, this left side where the white wires are that's your neutral bar the right side is your ground wires which goes to a grounding rod um, and the neutral and the ground are connected the what the big wire with the white wrapped around it that's your neutral from the street the two black wires coming in those are your hot wires each delivering 100 amps to each side so that's 200 amps those run to your breakers your breakers have your hot wire which goes to all your outlets so it's very simple like you know people get very intimidated by it but after doing it, it's very simple. All right, now we'll just roll through a couple of pictures of the bath, uh, my upstairs bathroom. So the shower, uh, put in these little cubby holes because you know everybody who has tile showers, there's no place to put anything. Um, and I have the same vanity as downstairs because if it's a winter, you know why not? And the toilet. So very, you know, keeping it very simple. Then let's move on to some pictures of my living room. Um, so yeah, leather, wood, um, here's my TV, 65 inch, I uh, mounted on the wall, we love it, and then let's go to my dining room, you know, nothing special here, it's just a, just a normal dining room, my son's room, and then we're about to get another angle of that, it's a pretty good sized room. So it's got a nice little hallway here where you can put stuff. And this is my sunroom. And it was that all that's bird shit. Okay, so like it was completely filthy. Cleaned it all up and here's how it looks afterwards. So it's a ton of work, but you know, it's there. And then I have my hallway. It looks like complete dog shit again. Um, this is me while I'm working on it. Painted the front, painted the sides, and then put new wood over the top. And here's that picture. So um, thank you guys. Uh, thanks for checking it out. And if you have any questions, I'll answer them.